In this video, I'd like to look at a web page that is going to fetch and parse an XML file. The code can be found at the URL seen here. Okay, so I'm in Visual Studio Code. I have an HTML file, uh, two uh, JavaScript files, a class, and some code that uses the class. I have some style. I have an XML file. I'm going to uh, have the live server extension installed in my Visual Studio. Um, so I'm going to right click. And I had open this uh, by open folder and sort of direct myself to the folder because when you use live server, it wants you to work with a folder, not with a file. Okay, so I'm gonna just open this with the live server. And it's this uh, example that I've shown before in different cases. Um, it's got this information about dogs and so it's just a simple class with some dog information. This time the dog information happens to come from an XML file. Okay, so let's look at the XML file. Um, so I think I took my other data file, my either my comma separated values or my JavaScript and went online and found some converter and uh, converted it. And so this was the XML that it came up with. So announced and it was XML, it made some overall uh, tag root. And um, then it has each, uh, what would be an object over in JSON, um, was it made tags, dogs, um, might have been nicer if it were dog than dogs, but it said dogs and then it gives the names. And this is a fairly simple XML in that you know, there are no attributes. It's just a clean uh, tag, dog name, open and close. So all of our information is enclosed between an open and closed tag. And these are, uh, it's, it's XML, these are extensible. These are sort of made up by uh, my property names. Okay, but so this is what we want to, this is what the XML looks like that we're going to parse. And the way we're going to parse the XML, we need to know what it looks like and what the what the names are and so on, what the tag names are. Okay, so let's get the easy things out of the way. Here's the XML. Uh, it attaches to the style. So the style is um, the box is for we have a we're, I'm using a grid style. So the style is mostly about getting the grid. I made the spans have an italic, italicized font. Um, wrapper and box are about the grid. And so are all these uh, start in column three and span five rows. These are all, um, it's all about the grid. I've talked about that in more detail in previous videos. So we're done with that. Here is the H. TML um, links to the style in the head. In the body, I have a header, and then I have the div and the wrapper class, and all the divs. And the this div has two classes: this the shared box, and then the individual little classes, which could have been IDs. But uh, the boxes should be a class because it's shared. These uh, can be a class, but they could also be ID. Oops, I didn't want that. And uh, so I have all these divs. Um, there's a drop down. There's an image. There's some spans for the information. Um, I connect to the dog class, and I connect to some code that uses the dog class. OK, so we did not, when we had JSON, uh, the file, when it was parsed, was understood to create objects. And so we didn't need to make our own class and objects of that class. But now that we're in XML, we're back to creating our own class. So when we had, if we had a, like a CSV, we were responsible for making the sort of class object structure. Um, and in JSON, we were not. That was all inherent in the file. And now in XML, we're back to 
we should make a class if we wanted to have that, uh, that structure. So we're gonna show a class, very simple, just data class, and then, um, and then using that class. Okay, so here is the, my class. It's got, use the keyword class. I called it dog class. It has a constructor. It brings in a number of properties and assigns them. Uh, so a dog name is just a, you know, a parameter coming in to the constructor. So you'll see the keyword new, then we'll know we're using the constructor. And then when that property comes in, it gets assigned to a property of the object called dog name. Um, okay, so that's the class. And then I'm using the class. And so here is the code. And what are we going to do? We're going to fetch that file, parse that file as XML, uh, load up the dog uh, information, the dog names into the list of options in the select, and then write some code for when the user chooses one of the dogs. Okay, so this is us going back to the page and getting a change listener, and there'll be a function so select dog below. Making an array to hold my array of dog objects. I'm fetching the dog data.xml file. Um, I don't have anything here that says that this data XML file is next to this uh, JS file. So all my files are siblings, which we can see over here in the uh, Explorer. And so now that we've seen it, let me close my Explorer to make a little more room. Okay, so I'm fetching dog data.xml. When we fetch, we could be fetching, say, from the internet. So I usually work with this uh, two stage then. And there can be things in the response. Uh, so you're making a request, and there will be a response. And there could be things in the response other than just the XML. Um, and so this first then says, forget any statuses and what have you. And let's just move forward with the actual data. So when we, if we had a CSV file, it was text. Um, when we had a JSON file, we responded with JSON because it was a little more intelligent and knew what to do with JSON. And, but now XML, we're, we're back to text. So we're just going to, at this stage, at this fetching and sending it on stage, we're just going to say it is text and then we'll deal with it when we get it at the next stage. So here's the next stage. Um, so the, the text of the data file that we sent forward, we're calling data, in which we know to be XML data. And here we're bringing in um, code that understands how to parse XML. So we're not going to write our own XML parser and, and look for tags and matching tags and, and um, that's doable, but difficult and it's been done. So let's just take advantage of other people's work. So I'm bringing in a parser that understands XML. So that's what line 10 here is about. Um, 12 is just a console log. Um, so it doesn't do anything to the page, but we're seeing that there are uh, many things in the XML with the tag name dogs. So it is, uh, that will be an array and an array has a length. And this will show us sort of how many dogs. So then I'm starting a for loop. And we've seen in other examples, there are often many ways to do a for loop, but I'm just going to do the old, uh, I don't have any arrays yet to uh, loop over. So, but I know how many of them there are because of the length that we just played with. So I'm just gonna do the old fashioned for loop of start with a counter i at zero, go up to not including the length of the array, go up by ones. And then here's the main way we work with this parser. Um, the, we're working with get elements by tag name. So there were, for each dog, there was some, there was a tag called dog's name. So if there are 10 dogs, there are 10 
dog name tags. So we're assuming that no property is skipped for any of the dogs. Um, and so I'm getting the elements by tag name, which gets me, um, we've, we've seen before get elements by name. Um, when you have the name attribute, this is get elements by tag name because it's uh, now we're playing with XML. So we are naming the tags. Um, and so we're getting the elements by tag name. And that was an array. And we're getting the, the ith one of those. And then uh, XML is, is extensible and can, you can have uh, things within. So within, so the, here's a dog tag and close dog tag, and then you, a dog name and close dog name tag and close dog name tag. And then here's what's between. So that would be the child. And there could be, it's possible there would be tags within tags, like dog name is within dogs. So we can have tags within tags, but we don't hear. And so we're saying, uh, go to the ith tag, that's named dog name, uh, go into its uh, child, which is what, what's between the open tag and the closed tag, and then just grab the simplest thing, the node value. So assume that there's no, there, we have a no inner tags, no, no child tags. It's just uh, the simple node value, which was the text. So this would be for the first dog. If when I is zero, we're in our first dog and we're getting bulldog. Okay. But because the XML can be more complicated, this code uh, looks complicated because of, of what XML could do. So parser, get elements by tag name. We had, we were, we knew the tag name. We're, we're not sort of doing any kind of discovery of the, of the names. We are saying, I know ahead of time I've looked in. I might not know it's bulldog, but I know that there's going to be an element called dog name for each dog. I'm going inside that tag. There could be multiple things. I'm going just, I know there's only one thing. So I'm going to grab the first thing, the zero thing, and then grab its value which was the text. And so I get the dog name and the dog height and the dog colors and the dog description and the dog group and the dog image all from the XML file. I'm console logging something so to sort of peek in and see if things are working. Um, and then I use those properties. I have to be careful that I'm respecting the signature. Then I have the same order in my class than I do here when I use the constructor. So I have the keyword new, I'm making an object of my dog class, I'm supplying the properties to my constructor to make my dog. And then once I've made an object, I am appending it to my array of dogs. So I have now an array of dog objects. I'm grabbing the select off the page, I'm looping through my, uh, my dogs, which is my array of objects, I'm creating options, I'm setting the text, to the name of the dog, I'm setting the value to I, the index, and I'm appending that option to my select. I, I've also used here add, sometimes I go back and forth between add and append child. I'm picking here a, the value was an index, I'm picking a random number using math, the math library, math.random and math.floor, math random times the number of dogs. And then math floor, that gets me an integer. And then I'm raising and dispatching an event, a change event. So it's like the user chose a random dog. Here's my select dog code. I'm going to the page, to the drop down, getting the value, which was an index. I'm getting the dog object with that index. And then I'm using the properties of that dog object the dog group, the dog height, the dog colors, and just displaying all these things in spans and setting the source of the image equal to using the dog name. So that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, the main thing was the parsing of the XML. So I will sort of show you that one more time. Here's the fetching of the XML, bring in a parser of XML, and here's the parsing of the XML, making sure we play with the get elements by tag name, child nodes, node value. This was the very sort of 
XML-ish part of everything. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks much for your attention.